glory. Come on and give him the praise this morning. Can we all sing it from the top? As we love, As we, love we love on you, God. On you. Receive our love. Receive our love. And as we shout, receive our praise. Where's your tambourine this morning? As we love, we love on you, God. I got tambourine hands, that's all right. Receive our love. Come on and bless him at home. Come on, bless him with us. As we shout, we shout your name. Receive our praise. Yeah, God, receive. Father God, for this day. Thank you what you've done in the service. Thank you what you're going to do in this service. We honor you, Father God, with the fruit of our lips, and we can't wait to get back into praise and worship. So let's get back. Let's get through these announcements quickly. Amen. So welcome. Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to those joining us live via YouTube and Facebook and those who will watch this later. Happy Mother's Day. So we are Redemptive Life Church where our mission is to share the message of Jesus Christ and the new life we have in him because we have been redeemed. Amen. Our vision is to reach the lost, equip the saints, and spread the message of redemption so that purpose can be fulfilled. And our motto is very simple. We, we love God and we love people. We love God through our obedience, and we love people through our service. Amen. So 
couple announcements. Again, go to our website, rlc-hsv.org, for any information. Uh, remember, remember, you can go to the uh, Redemptive Life app on your phone. And, uh, or join us on any social media platform. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we have prayer every Tuesday morning at 545. We command our morning with the word of God and a word of prayer. And the phone number and access code is listed there. Uh, so coming up this week, let me hear the men. Yeah. The men you will be meeting this Thursday at, <laughs> at the 16th. <laughs> we love our, we love the, our men's. With the men's is this. The men's is this, again will be meeting uh, on the on the 16th. So more information will be coming. So next Sunday, let me hear all the Asians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and the month of May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And so we'll be celebrating next Sunday. Amen. I celebrate every day. Hallelujah. Amen. And also, after service next Sunday, we'll have a quick business meeting. For those who aren't able to be here live, you, you can join in via Zoom. Just uh, email um, info or, in, or admin. Oh, admin at rlc-hsv.org. Uh, for the women, let me hear the women. Yeah, woo! So we thank you for coming out yesterday. We had a great time with food and fellowship and just a lot of laughters. Uh, so thank you for being flexible, you know, with uh, having to switch things at the last minute. But we are going to go to the Botanical Gardens on the first Saturday next month. So mark your calendars for June 1st. Uh, so I say 10.30 so we can get there by 11. That's what time the butterfly release starts. So the um, sign-up sheet is there at the back. Uh, and the end of the month is Memorial Day. Just want to remind you that there will be no in-person service on Sunday, May 26th. So enjoy your family. I know there will be quite a few people traveling, so safe travels, but enjoy your family. So no gathering in person, but we'll have something online. And then looking forward to next month, uh, besides the women's uh, meeting, on the second Saturday, we're going to have our, our uh, church-wide friends and family social. So mark your calendars for June 8th. Invite your family and friends. We're going to have a great time that weekend. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, thank you again for those uh, who continually give to our ministry. We thank you for your generosity. There's multiple ways to give. You can give electronically through Giveify or Cash App. Just look for Redemptive Life Church. For those here in the sanctuary, you can drop off your offering in the offering um, receptacle that's over at the back um, on your way out. And if you want to mail in your tithes and offering, you can do so at our mailing address of 6275 University Drive, Suite 37-252 in Huntsville, 35806. We just ask that you please do not send cash. So let's do our tithing confession together. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to give me seed to sow into your kingdom. Because I cheerfully bring my tithe and offering into your storehouse, you promise to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Thank you for providing for all of my needs and for using me to bless others. Amen. Thank you, Father God. We are conduits of your blessing. As we give unto you, you give back unto us that 30, 60, 100-fold blessing. Give us the wisdom on how to uh, allocate the resources that you're going to allow to come through our hands. It is in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I think I'll bring up you, Pastor. Excuse us for technical difficulties. Oh, okay. So as is Mother's Day, we we want um, we've asked three very special ladies to come up and just share a little bit about their motherhood experiences, good and the bad, the ugly maybe, <laughs> and some scriptures. So the first that we're going to bring up is Mama Vivi. Where is Mama Vivi? Oh, she's out there greeting. Come on, Mama Vivi. Look at her. Come on. Yes, you're up first. <laughs> <laughs> Carmel, we're going to watch how she walks in. Amen. <laughs> All right, Mama Vivi. 
Do you want up here or down here? Okay. <laughs> Stay down here. You go. Jump. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, I was asked to talk, you know, what I've learned about motherhood. Huh. I would rather start out being a grandmother, <laughs> you know, but I'll take what I can get. I'm going to be real quick. The first thing that I learned is that children are a gift from the Lord. And you find that also in Psalms 127, verse 3. And so we should treat them like gifts and remind and remind ourselves and them that they are precious to us. The second is the parent-child relationship in Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. And we are to nurture our children. We are supposed to um, remind them of the goodness of the Lord that he's done for us. They should always see us praying. They should always see us giving thanks. They should all, and we should be encouraging our children. We should be telling them all kind of good things. But as I learn, let your no be no, and let your yes be yes. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't have to say it so many times. Well. You know? <laughs> I used to tell my daughter the third time. She you knows she asked me that, whatever it is, she's not gonna get it. That's how I kind of did, but not always. But for children, they, when they learn to say that, when you tell somebody no, that means no. When you say yes, that means yes. And you don't have to give any other explanation because then you're gonna take it to a path you don't wanna go. The thing about, I, I learned was that um, never, ever, uh, you shouldn't embarrass your children and, the, and other people, but they should be to the point you should never have to because if you get them early, I, I used to tell, I never punish Mashari for something that she did wrong the first time, because you didn't know any better. But once you know better, yeah. belongs to me. <laughs> yes. And we should not, I learned that you should not punish your children when you're angry, especially when you want to just, <laughs> then you say, take a breather. But after I have done these things, that's why I can tell you not to do them. Because it's, it doesn't make it, they don't, they don't. And if you have more than one child, I've learned, you have certain rules that none of them can cross. But after that, you go along with their personalities. Um, the third thing is pray for your children. Joel 1 and 3, you should pray for your children, you should tell them as I said before, how good God has been to you. You should all encourage your children. You should, um, if they bring home a C, when you know they can do better, you talk to them about it. You don't, you better. If you know that the best they can do, that's right, they encourage them, think, wow. And, but correct when things is wrong and teach them to honor and love themselves. And finally, if you're married, do not fuss and fight and talk on any kind of way in front of your children and expect that they're not going to do it to you because truly, and especially if you talk about people when they're little, when them folks come around you, <laughs> out of the blue, them kids say something, bam. You have to act like, where you get that from? You didn't know you were talking about them because your kids will, will tell on you. So just love them, hug them, and try not to hurt them and <laughs> run to the Lord right away before you put your hand on your child because they will call the cops on you now. <laughs> and thank you. Amen. Words of wisdom and humor. I had a flashback when you talk about the grades because, you know, being Asian, some Asian stereotypes hold true. It's an A, why not A plus, you know? <laughs> so, anyway. so our next beautiful uh, mother coming up is Claudia Gilbert. I had wrote a little something because I was a totally different type of mother. Um, well, let me say, being a mother is a job that only one book can tell you how to raise them, <laughs> and that's the Bible. Um, I learned that every child is different. 
I used to question, how can all the kids grow up in one house and come out so different? Now I know. <laughs> um, as a mother, I know that I love my children, but there are times that I had to speak in tongues <laughs> to keep from, I was, like I said, I was a different type of mother. And um, when I was 11 years old, I had surgery on my back and that was a 23 hour surgery. And the doctor told my mother she can never have children or she would die in labor. And well, God has a sense of humor because I got so many, I can't even count. <laughs> so I knew then that I was gonna be a different type of mother. Um, I didn't have to really discipline my children too much. They was always scared of what kind of punishment mama would come up with. Um, so, you know, they, they knew, I'll give you a perfect example real quick. One time, Kobe kept making bad grades, and I talked to the teachers, and I was like, oh, he's a good kid, very respectable, very, you know, very nice, very mannerable, everything, but he just won't do the work. He would do, he would help Jordan with her work, but wouldn't do his own work. So I asked him, you know, I tried to go, we tried to go through everything, you know, do you need a tutor? Can, how can we help you? What's going on? Oh, nothing, mom, I'm cool, I'm cool. So I told my husband, I said, well, he cares more about his appearance than he do his grades. Went to Walmart, bought two pair of jeans and three t-shirts, and he wore it every day to the next report card. Oh, wow. <laughs> and his teacher said, his grades are up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess, you know, being a mom, your children are all different, but they will drive you crazy. But I do pray for them. I pray for them all the time. My good times and my bad times, they were all worth it. From the time that one put my contacts in because she thought she was going to have hazel eyes and they was clear. <laughs> and the school called me because they thought she was something else because I eyes were red. Um, from the time that one went, got on the wrong school bus and went missing in the second grade, <laughs> to the other times when one put on gloves trying to steal cookies but didn't want to leave fingerprints. <laughs> yes. So all of them have given me headaches, and but I love them. Um, I was. I was one who disciplined them different, totally different. And um, even down to my, we, we, when my husband started me doing that, we ranked them now. So they, they like in competition, like if they do something, like today they trying to see who's gonna be ranked number one for Mother's Day. <laughs> so, you know, being a mother is a blessing. It's a blessing, and if you, like Mama V said, if you have more than one, you will learn that they all have different personalities, but as a mother, you will get to know each and every last one of them, and all seven of ours is the reason why I'm overweight, is <laughs> the reason why I love so hard, is the reason why I pray so hard, and you will constantly worry about them. Now I understand what my grandmother was telling me when she said, they could be 40 years old and you'll be worried about them. And I, and I was like, why? <laughs> but now I completely understand. It's, it's a hard job. It is, it's a hard job, but it's a loving job and it's a blessing to have that job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the words of wisdom from the perspective of multiple children. Um, and the last and uh, guest, or say guest, speaker is Carmel Pope. Go ahead, that's my mommy. That's my mommy. <laughs> so good morning. I'm actually um, speaking from the standpoint of adoption. That is my story. Um, we adopted our daughter when she was 22. Um, so a lot of the things that most mothers experience in labor and diapers, we didn't experience that because she was 22 when we had her, when we adopted her. Um, but I remember um, 
after she moved, so it's a long story and we can tell the story another time, but after she moved to Huntsville and she was living with us and we were um, just kind of helping her walk through some of the trauma and struggles that she had gone through and um, it was definitely a travailing hard time. And I remember a moment where God kind of spoke to my husband and I and said, you know, this stage of the travail is over and when it's we're time to go to the next stage. And I remember we both, you know, that was significant for us because it was really hard in those times. And I remember we both looked and recognized that she had been with us nine months when he spoke that to us. And so even though I didn't have the exact same thing that many of you mothers had, you know, with a small child, he through our relationship, we've gone through those stages of birth. And I remember when she was going through temper tantrums <laughs> as a 22 year old. And I remember when we were going through like the teen stage where we were just disagreeing and she wanted to do what she wanted to do. And I'm like, no, you're going to do what I want you to do. Right. And so we, we even though it's different, it's still so similar. And I'm so thankful. Um, my scripture was the same as um, Miss Vivi, which is. Um, Psalm 127.3, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from heaven. And so um, Karma Shea is absolutely my gift. And she, I, I, I can, she is, I'm so much better of a person because of her. And so I really want to encourage mothers. It's easy to um, see the things that they were not doing and see the things you wish they were doing. And there's so many ways that we can find negative. But in this day, as we are celebrating mothers, I just encourage you to see the gift that you have in your children and to recognize that they are a gift. And those of you um, that I just everybody, I want you to know you are a gift. You are a gift to you. And if your parents didn't give you that special recognition or let you know that, know that your heavenly father sees you as a gift and he loves you for the gift that you are. So I'm just thankful <clears throat> that I've had the opportunity to um, to share. I'm honored to be able to share today. And I thank you, Karma Shea, for being my gift. And I'm thankful to the Lord for blessing me. Amen. 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 I'm going to bring up Pastor. He, he has a special presentation. Oh. 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 Oh, in a tweet. Well, first off, from, from me, from Pastor Willis, and from Dr. Mina, we want to say collectively, happy Mother's Day to you all, ladies. Motherhood is a blessing. Can all of the mothers please stand to their feet real quick? All of the mothers. Colby, Bubba, I want you to give each of these mothers a rose. We want to give you a rose because we think you're very special and flowers are beautiful. And however, you get to pick which one you want. So I was told at one point in time, you should only give roses, to, red roses to, you know, your, your mate. And I said, you know, I know a lot of women that like red roses either way. So you have a choice of which rose you would like to have simply because we think that you're beautiful. We think that you all are wonderful. And guess what? Ladies, without you, there would be no me. <laughs> hey. So yes, yes, everyone get a rose. And you may be seated once you have your rose. Yeah, it's a rose. <laughs> yeah. So, we're going to do something. You want to do that? There we go. <laughs> yeah, put it right there. That's why every man needs a woman, amen? A wife. <laughs> well, that's right, hey, right. Make it right. Make it right. Love Muffin, can you do me a favor, sweetie? Since you're, I'm going to explain why we're doing what we're doing, but I would love it if you would light the candles. 
Go ahead, yes, please light the candles. So we're lighting these candles. Um, typically, when you light a candle, you do so in memory of someone or something. I woke up this morning and I began to reflect on those who no longer have mothers. I began to reflect on those who today is probably not the best day and I just had a friend uh, on yesterday lose her mother. And um, the first candle that we lit is for those grieving who have lost children. That is a different type of hurt that only a mother would truly understand. And we want to know that we acknowledge you and we love you. The second, ca second candle is for those who have never had or were unable to have children. That is a different type of scenario that is very difficult. And then the third candle is for those who have mothers who have passed away. That is a hurt that only those who have gone through it could experience it. And we light this candle such that we want to convey this message. May this candle represent the light of God's love that is ever failing that will provide comfort in the midst of a painful memory. We love you and God bless you. Amen. Come on up, praise team. Praise the Lord, amen. What a, what a wonderful day to be able to celebrate the mothers, the women, the families, um, and also, of course, to celebrate God. This is also a great season as we see all of the graduations that are happening. One of the things that I'm reminded of in this season is that when people get awards, when people wear the stoles and the sashes or their names get called because they've done something amazing that they're getting recognized for, it lets me know that these individuals have worked hard for something, right? And so we say they deserve this award. They deserve this recognition. But we're going to sing a song this morning that says you deserve it. And it's because when we think about all of the things that God has done for us, it literally blows my mind at how amazing he is. He deserves the best of what we have to give. Amen. So can you stand to your feet as we continue to worship him this morning? We all know this song, so we're going to sing it together. It says, you deserve it. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to give you the best of what we have this morning. You deserve our best praise, our hallelujah. All that we have is yours, Lord. Mm -hmm. We give you everything, it's yours, oh God. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. I'll give you my best praise. My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Can you help me say, My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on and worship him for yourself. Say, My hallelujah. Belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah. All belongs, belongs to you. Everything that I have, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can we all raise our hands in this building and say, You deserve it? You deserve it. Come on, sing it from your heart. You deserve, you deserve it. it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Come on, I need 
need everybody to ring that out. All the glory. All the glory belongs to you. God, we give you all the glory today. Say, all of the glory belongs. So we say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. all the glory, all the glory, all the honor, all the, honor. All the, pride. All the pride, you deserve it. Sing it with me. My hallelujah. Maybe you forgot to run back and tell him thank you, but do it now. Come on. Lord, we thank you for everything. Our hallelujah. 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 He deserves our praise. Hallelujah. He deserves the glory. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, sing it with me. You deserve it. Come on, tell him you deserve it. You deserve it. God, we say thank you. You deserve it. Lord, we bless your name. You deserve it. You deserve it, God. You deserve it. Thank you, Lord. We say that you deserve our greatest praise, Lord. You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of praise. And Lord, for your goodness and your mercy toward us, we offer you this praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just meditate on these words with us as we offer praise unto our God alone? Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We bless your name, God. 
We honor you, Lord. We offer praise.
hasn't he been good to you and, and your, your mercy, mercy yes lord toward us come on and say it again for your goodness for your goodness, your goodness god and, and your mercy toward us we, we Sing that with us. We offer praise. We offer praise. Oh God, we offer you praise. We offer praise. You've been really, really good to us, God. You've been more than faithful to us, God. We offer praise. We offer you praise, oh God, we offer you our best praise. We offer praise. Come on and give God praise right there. Come on and give God praise right there like you're really thankful for him. Can you give God praise like you know that he's been working on your behalf? Can you give God praise like you trust him with what you're going through? Can you give God the praise that you forgot to give to him when he came through for you? God, we bless you and we thank you. God, we honor you. God, we're grateful. God, we glorify your name. God, we lift your name up in this place this morning. You've been more than faithful to us. You've proven, God, that you are more than able, God. So we give you glory and praise for everything that you've done, for every way that you made, for every way that you brought us through. We offer you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah this morning. We bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Has he not been good to us? Amen. Has he not been merciful? Hallelujah. So thankful for God and his goodness and his love and his mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, I am privileged, honored, and excited to introduce uh, the speaker of the day, who happens to be one of my favorite people. Um, <laughs> and uh, you guys heard her last year here on Mother's Day as she spoke, and so we are excited to have her back. I'm excited to have her back. She's actually going to be staying with us for a few months. Amen. <laughs> So I am just super excited. So um, just want to say and welcome my mom, Minister Patricia Nettles, as she comes to bring the word today. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Nothing gives a mother more honor than to see her children walking in the Lord. And I am eternally grateful to God for a daughter and a son-in-law and a granddaughter who serve the Lord with all their hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they walk in wisdom on a daily basis. And God has even made them financially strong in the earth. I must say thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. What more could a mother ask for? Hallelujah. My heart is overwhelmed on this Mother's Day, ladies. Because I have seen the hand of the Lord at work in my own life and in the life of my offspring. Praise the Lord. I give honor to the shepherd of this flock. I have perceived that he is a man of God who really honors the Lord in his heart, and that makes me glad way down on the inside. Praise the Lord. I give honor to our first lady. God has blessed her with the blessing of humor. And we love it when she's around. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I would like to also give honor to this wonderful praise team. I told, I told my husband as we pulled up, I said, the praise is good in the house. And I was, I'm, I'm just so pleased. I'm a, I'm a praise person. I, I spend most of my prayer time <laughs> praising God. And I know that's where he lives. And I want to be right up there under his wings 24-7. Praise the Lord. Let us pray, saints. Father, I give you honor today because you have allowed me to speak to your people. I ask you to use me as a glove. Put your hand on me and cause me to say what thus saith the Lord. Bless the mothers and bless the congregation this day for the word that you have for us. I thank you, I praise you, I glorify and I magnify you for all that you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes today from the topic, the heart of a mother. The heart of a mother. And strange as it sounds, I'm going to come from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, the book that talks about the creation of the world. Jennifer's, uh, Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The story of creation of the world, of the universe, of all that we see and know is recorded in the book of Genesis. It's estimated to have taken place about 4,000 years, no, in 4,000 BC, about 6,000 years ago. But this is the thing that caught me as the Lord began to show me this. It wasn't the man that God called to record the account of what happened when he created the earth was not born until 2,474 years afterwards. So you see, the thing that he did in recording God's creation was incredible. I mean, how could he, the only way, he could have possibly written down the events that occurred more than 2,400 years before he was born. He had to have heard directly, verbatim, word for word, from the Most High God. Yahweh, the one who did the creating. The same God, by the way, who lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. On day one, he created light and darkness. That's also strange because I said there was nothing. So how could it not have been darkness? I don't get it. But on day one, he created light and darkness. On day two, he created the sky and the space between heaven and earth. On day three, he created dry land and vegetation of every sort and seed-bearing trees and fruit-bearing plants. And on day four, he created the sun and the moon and the stars. God put in motion a system that astronomers have been studying for more than 6,000 years. Isn't it funny? The Bible says the sun knows when to set. 365 days a year 
for over 6,000 years, it knows when to get up. It knows where. It knows even the season of the year. Sometimes it shines more in a day than it does in others. They've all measured it and they know it. This God put that in place one day. The sun knows when to set, and he says, it says that he also created the stars on that same day. I looked it up because I said, how many stars are there? And as far as we know, there are over 400 billion stars. And not only that, the Bible says in Psalms 147 verse 4 that he knows the stars by name. Oh, my Lord. This is a mighty God we serve. Glory, hallelujah. On day five, he created the fish and the birds. And on day six, he created the livestock and the animals that scurry along on the ground and the wild animals. And I looked up how many animals did he create? And we don't know the answer to that. Nobody really knows, but... Science has recorded over 2.13 million different species of animals. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. We are created in God's image. In God's image. We're told that on the seventh day the Lord rested. God worked and he rested. If we work constantly and don't rest, we find ourselves in trouble. Rest is an intricate part of a balanced life. If we rest all the time and we don't work, God describes that in his word as laziness. And God's word is full of the negative consequences of laziness, especially in the book of Proverbs. Actually, the word of God is so serious about the value of productivity that he said in 2 Corinthians 3 and 10, if a man doesn't work, Neither should he eat. That's serious, people. So it's imperative that we be productive people, making our lives and the lives of others better. Number one, God worked and he rested. God made us in his image. Being created in the image of God Number two, God is both serious and he's playful. <laughs> you know, the Lord has a sense of humor. <laughs> he requires obedience, but he is tender towards the repentant heart. It says male and female, he created them. So God gave some of his qualities to the men, some of his qualities to the women. And you know, we are different. We're physically different. Well, men are usually a little more assertive. Women are usually warmer and a little more sensitive. Men spend a little more time relaxing. I used to didn't like that. But women, you know, we plan way down the road and we, you know, Look at all the details that he may not notice. <laughs> God has all the characteristics in and of himself. He gives some to the male, some to the female. When they come together, it is complete. Praise the Lord. But this morning, I'd like to suggest to you that the Lord God the omnipotent one, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
the one who protected Daniel when he was in the lion's den, the one who changed Saul of Tarsus into Paul the apostle, the one who always was and always will be. This God, number three, number three, I'm going to count in a minute. Number three, has the heart of a mother. He loved us before we ever thought about loving him. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 45, he makes the sun to rise on the good and the evil. Actually, God loves us even when we do wrong. But the Lord has put a ferociousness in a mother that somehow when she sees something that might be a danger to her child, she rises up like a lion. <laughs> Have you ever heard a, a mother, you know, watching the news at night and you see some boy who did something terribly or they say did something terribly wrong and he, he put the mic on the mama and she crying I'm telling you she telling you that boy didn't do it she means it it's a it's a love that God put in her daddies want the best for their children and we honor them for that but if you want somebody to fight for you <laughs> you get mama on your side <laughs> baby that gonna be a fight up in here if mama on your side. Thank you, Lord. Now that trait, my dear brothers and sisters, came directly from the Lord. God has the heart of both the father and the mother. He will provide for all our needs. He will protect us in danger. And like a mother who will Fight for her babies. He will move mountains on our behalf. I think about, uh, I want to say Abram, Abraham. His name was Abram at the time. It was in Genesis chapter 12. And uh, there was a famine in the land. He was married to, her name was still Sarai at the time. And they, because of the famine, they moved to Egypt and his wife, Sarai, was a very beautiful woman. She was not very young at that time, but she was still like Vivi. She was beautiful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when they moved to Egypt, the Pharaoh looked at her and wanted her, and so he took her into his harem and I imagine Abraham prayed, but the Bible doesn't say what he did. All it tells us was that the Lord sent a terrible plague upon Pharaoh and all his household. Oh, yeah, the next morning he called Abram in and said, what you trying to do to me? Because the ferociousness of the Lord was on him, and he knew I don't know who this woman is, but I can't touch her. I know that for sure. Praise the Lord. I'm reminded of the story of Joseph. And you know Joseph was the 11th of Jacob's 12 children. And he was the son of Rachel. You know he loved himself some Rachel. And, and Rachel had died. And Jacob just, he just loved Joseph. He bought him a fancy coat and his brothers were jealous and lo and behold Joseph he didn't know no better he was real young had a dream and looked like they were all going to serve him and he told his brothers and they got mad and they actually ended up selling him as a slave and they took him to Egypt now you know there wasn't anything Joseph could do about it. I mean, we in plenty of situations where we can't do nothing about it, right? But he kept doing the right thing. 
over and over and over again for years. That's the thing about the Lord. He doesn't tell you when he's coming. You just got to keep on doing the right thing over and over and over again. And one day, when you least expect it, he'll lift you up right out of the doldrums. Well, Joseph was in a mess. He was a, he was a slave in his master's house and he just kept on doing the right thing, just kept on serving the Lord. Okay, this way I am, just kept on serving the Lord. Lo and behold, the master saw how he was blessed and put him in charge of everything. Joseph had it made. Ooh, okay, I had it made at home, but I am pretty much got it made. Okay. Then, of course, the devil was mad, and that's fine, but it's all in God's plan. He was lied on, ended up in prison. But even there, he kept doing the right thing, doing the right thing, doing the right thing, over and over. And lo and behold, he was in charge of everybody in the prison that said the only one that was over him was the warden, and he prospered there too. But God had a plan for him, and he ended up the second in command of the richest nation on the face of the earth. Look at God. He fought for his man, and he caused him to win. Hallelujah. Don't give up. I don't care how long it takes. Don't give up. God's working his it don't feel good. It don't look good. But that ain't got nothing to do with it. Because we don't judge by how it looks. Praise the Lord. I'm reminded of the story of Ruth. She was a Moabitess. She wasn't even an Israelite woman. And she was in a tough place. Lost her husband. Had no way of making a living, you know. Back then, women didn't earn like they earn now. She just didn't have any hope. But the Bible said it so happened that she ended up gleaning in a field, you know, gleaning, just picking up the leavings after the crop was harvested and gleaning in that field. And it just so happened it was the field of the richest man around. And then God married them, and Ruth the Moabitist, not even an Israelite, became an ancestor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at God. I'm reminded of the story of Paul and Silas. They were unjustly beaten and thrown in jail. And they were thrown in jail, of course, for preaching the gospel of the living God. Now they could have cussed and fussed and carried on like many of us would have done. But they just, I mean, they not only did the right thing, this is so mind boggling for me, but beaten and thrown in prison unjustly, they praised God. They had to be sincere. They praised God and they sung praises to him. And the Bible said, an earthquake came and shook the jail and the doors all flew open and the bands that were on every prisoner came off. Hallelujah. Look at God. If you've ever experienced the love of a mother, God loves you more and he has the power and the desire you know I've always known he had the power I just felt like Lord do you want to help me because I know you can but this is the thing he has the power and the desire to bring us to complete victory he's got the heart of a mother my people trust him and he'll carry you all the way. Happy Mother's Day.
Hallelujah. We certainly thank God for the rain. Come on, stand to your feet and give the woman of God a hand. We thank you. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. We bless God for the word. Saints, uh, come on, Antonio, for a second. Somebody help me. Hold on. There's, there, I have loved the atmosphere this morning. And before we leave, I need Antonia, before I dismiss, I wanted to sing uh, a verse of this song. And y'all know me. This is also for you because I know that you would appreciate it as well. <laughs> There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place and i know that it's the spirit of the lord there are sweet expressions on each face and i that it's the spirit of the Lord. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us. Filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place hallelujah minister nettles i was gonna sing it but i let her go ahead on and do it amen saints of god god bless you mothers please please enjoy yourselves today and honor yourselves as well give yourselves grace mothers there's a lot of times where you do things that you don't think probably was the best decision but you know what even in your mistakes, we understand, specifically those of us who pray and love our mothers, that you did the best that you can, and your heart was always a heart of love. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this service today. Father, we pray over our mothers, God. We just declare that our mothers are blessed, Father. They are healed, they are growing, and they are indeed loved. Now, Father, as we leave this place but never your presence, Father, we declare open opportunities, God. We declare divine doors are opening, Father. We declare a closer walk walk with you in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.